After initially being told that their requests were outside the city's jurisdiction, a small group of concerned Port Moody residents and members of Force of Nature Alliance were invited back to Port Moody City Hall on January 23rd, where they were given the opportunity to convince council that their concerns should be heard. Tri-Cities Community TV was there and brings you this coverage. Today, um, as a first step towards asking Port Moody to sue Big Oil, uh, I want to thank uh, Mark Norbury from the DOC for starting this campaign and um, everybody who's come tonight. Uh, at first we were denied a delegation because the city said that it wasn't within their jurisdiction to sue Big Oil. Tonight we're asking the City Council of Port Moody to recognize that it's within their jurisdiction and to accept our delegation, the delegation from Sue Big Oil. So we're going to go in tonight. If you're a resident of Port Moody, please consider speaking and speak politely and respectfully to the mayor and council because we're asking them nicely to accept our delegation. Thank you. And so shall pollute our air. Let's make oil companies pay their share. Exxon so shall pollute our air. Let's make oil companies pay for their share. Exxon so shall pollute our air. Let's make oil companies pay their share. Before the council doors open, we had an opportunity to speak with some of the organizers of the campaign. Hi, my name is Mark Norbury. Um, I'm a resident of Port Moody and I'm involved in the local environmental group called the Le Dato Sea Circle. And uh, I've been involved in the Super Goal campaign for about a year now. The campaign is basically to do with um, divesting from fossil fuels. Um, because as we know, climate change is upon us. It's a very serious issue. Many people are dying because of it. Uh, thousands of people every year die from climate change related issues like vector borne diseases and, and so on. And many, even local events are happening. We have wildfires, we're having flooding, um, and many other events. So it's really a way to take action um, because one of the, the big issues at the moment is that we're continuing to burn fossil fuels. And so we really wanna divest away from that. And this is a very powerful way to do that because it's using the legal system. Um, it's the provincial uh, legal system. So we are encouraging cities and municipalities across the province of British Columbia um, to join in with the class action lawsuit, um, which is basically to, to sue big oil so that they pay their fair share uh, towards the um, the harm that they have done through the selling of their products and also through the misinformation that they've been providing to the public at large for the last several decades. Well, the Sue Big Oil campaign is a, is a movement of ordinary British Columbians who are concerned about the costs of climate change facing their communities and they're calling on local governments to uh, join together to file a class action lawsuit to make the world's largest oil companies pay for a fair share of the cost of climate impacts in BC communities. Because BC communities are struggling under the cost of climate change, things like sea level rise, floods from extreme storms and atmospheric rivers, heat domes, um, forest fire management, and so the, the communities, the local governments cannot afford all these costs. So they're asking for the world's largest oil companies to pay their fair share because these companies are most responsible for causing climate change. They knew for decades about the harm that was being caused. They spread misinformation and undermine the climate science and block climate policies, and therefore we think they should pay a fair share of the costs facing PC communities. You could go to our website at www.suebigoil.ca and um, if you want to support our campaign, you can sign the Sue Big Oil Declaration. That means that your voice is counted. So far we have 10,000 British Columbians who've signed and um, yeah, that would be great. Council will not be debating or providing comments regarding during this portion of the agenda. With respect to item 12.2, Council will be discussing whether or not to permit the delegation to proceed at the February 13th regular Council meeting. Again, the topic before Council this evening is whether or not the topic be scheduled as a delegation for a future meeting and not to consider the topic itself at this time. Having said that, interpreting that, 
when we get to item 12.2, if council moves ahead with uh, approving a delegation for our next regular council meeting, that will be time to debate the issues surrounding Sioux Big Oil. Tonight is just, um, it, it, it's a policy. The city has a policy in regards to non-jurisdictional issues. So we need the council vote to uh, get that on a future agenda. So public input, I'm going to start with the list of uh, people that are in the audience here. And Ms. Lamb, our city, our, our city clerk, will be helping facilitate participation of people online. The first speaker I have up is Mark Norbury. Yeah. And Mr. Norbury, you have two minutes. Good evening, Acting Mayor with Councillors and members of the public. As stated in the request, currently taxpayers are expected to put the bill for 100% of the costs associated with climate change, with its adaption and preparedness. And these costs are set to rise annually as climate-related events occur with greater frequency each year. This relates to issues described in our city's climate action plan, which is obviously jurisdictional. So then is this delegation request. According to this plan, the costs are likely to be anywhere from $1 million up to $8 million. Where will the city get this additional revenue from? Our city's budget is already strained as it is. When I informed Councillor Agtrap about the Sioux Big Oil campaign, she very kindly emailed me back and told me about Resolution 654 made at the Council meeting of 9th of April 2019, requesting the provincial government to take legal action against fossil fuel companies. As far as I can see, if that was jurisdictional and it was discussed at provincial level action, then Subic Oil, which is at the city level, is certainly jurisdictional because the Subic Oil campaign concerns city costs, including emergency services, damage to roads and other public property, rising insurance premiums and so on. Furthermore, Andrew Gage, a professional lawyer and expert in this area, has in his email to city staff provided a valid proof of how it is jurisdictional. No valid proof whatsoever by anyone has been provided to us on how it might be non-jurisdictional. Therefore, logic dictates, as far as I can see, that it must in fact be jurisdictional, and as far as I, I can see, it would be irrational to believe otherwise. When I received the response from city staff to our delegation request that they thought it was non-jurisdictional, I was a little shocked, um, because these are matters of utmost importance, and they are most definitely do jurisdictional. Thank you for listening. Look at that, two minutes on the dot. Sorry, Mr. Norbury, I forgot to ask for the record your name and city of residence. Yes, Mark Norbury, and I live in Poverty. Great, thank you. Person number two on my list is Justin Arsenault. Justin, just as a reminder, the first thing we like to hear is who you are and where you live. Right, uh, hello, Acting Mayor DeWorth and City Council. My name is Justin Arsenault, and I am a resident of Port Moody. You have two minutes. All right, I would like to speak today in support of the proposal that the Sioux Big Oil delegation be allowed to make a presentation to Council at a future meeting. Um, I understand there may be a variety of opinions on Council about the delegation itself, but regardless of how you feel about the delegation, I do think that it's important that you at least hear us out. Um, the, the decision by the city to block the delegation on the basis of it being non-jurisdictional, I think, was a mistake. Um, the proposal that the delegation wants to bring forward has to do with the city taking action on a matter related to city infrastructure, city funding, and the city's environment. Um, so I think it is very much within the city's jurisdiction. Um, given that, um, regardless of whether or not you um, think that you would support the proposal if we were to bring it forward, um, I think that it is your responsibility as a council to listen to us as residents when you want to bring forward an idea. Um, I think that this is really foundational to the democratic process in this city. Um, and what we were discussing today, of course, is not the merits of the delegation itself, but really about whether or not um, residents are going to be able to fully exercise those democratic rights in the city to make a proposal. Um, and so given that, um, I hope that the council can support the motion for the uh, delegation to go forward in a future meeting so that at that point we can make our case and we can have a proper discussion about that issue and then figure out whether or not Subi Oil is a good action for the city to take. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Benjamin Perry. I'm a resident of Coquitlam. I'm here to speak on the Subi Oil delegation. 
Um, I'm also representing the Force of Nature Alliance. Um, I just wanted to thank Council for giving a second opportunity to consider the delegation. I understand it's kind of a, an unprecedented request for the city of Port Moody. Um, we all use oil and gas every day in our lives, and they're an important part of our economy as well. Unfortunately, oil and gas companies are incapable of doing the responsible thing and reducing their production and helping us to transition off fossil fuels because they're tasked with um, making profits, and that's what, what their job is. The job of governments is to provide a counterbalance to that, and I think a part of that is why the city of Port Moody has jurisdiction on this issue in order to protect the people from the costs incurred by the oil company's activities. And we all participate in as well. So thank you again for reconsidering um, the delegation request. Thank you. Is anyone in the audience or watching online as part of the webinar that would like to speak to council as part of public input? For a third and final time, I'm asking if there are members online or in the audience that would like to speak as part of public input. We are moving on to item 12.2, request to place a non-jurisdictional delegation item on an upcoming agenda. There are two options in front of us, and I, I, I have spoken to this earlier. Again, I don't think council has uh, heard the information that we are debating the issue of adding this as a future delegation. We're not debating the merits of Councillor McCarthy, I have you up first. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, a lot more to say than that. Um, so I first want to talk about what it is we're debating tonight, which is, uh, as the mayor just said, which is if council will allow the delegation to be presented to us on Subic Oil. What is Subic Oil? As we've heard, it's a movement towards a class action lawsuit targeting the world's major fossil fuel companies so that municipalities can recoup a fair share of climate related costs. And you need not look beyond our own climate action plan budget, as was mentioned during public input, that is going to be in the millions of dollars over the next decade to know that um, climate costs are real and our residents are the one on the hook paying for these costs uh, that have resulted from the burning of fossil fuels. But tonight, uh, we are not debating how we feel about that. We are considering whether or not to even hear from this delegation. And I have to disagree completely on the notion that this is a non-jurisdictional issue uh, per uh, subject, subjective interpretation of city policy. An interpretation, I believe, was reviewed by the mayor, and she's not here uh, to, to have her explain her um, interpretation of this. Our policy defines non-jurisdictional as issues, quote, issues over which council does not have legal, financial, geographic, or operational effect. How is a group seeking a decision that only council can make non-jurisdictional? The issue the delegation wants to ask us about is if our city will or will not join a class action lawsuit alongside other municipalities. That is the question the group wants to ask us, and we are the only ones who can answer. That is the question the group has asked many other municipalities, and from my understanding, we are the only city who has refused to hear this delegation. And we know that this is a jurisdictional issue for local governments because our councils have other councils that signed on to this already. And we are not living in a different legal reality than other local governments. But the key point here is this group includes our residents. As we heard today, it represents the views of so, so many more in our community. We've received many emails um, as well. Our entire job as a council is to hear from people, not preventing them from speaking to us, especially on critical issues like climate change. Who are we to block an important conversation to our community from happening? And any past conversations at this council table on topics related to this are a great background, but irrelevant to today in a heat dome, cataclysmic flood, and wildfire era that we now find ourselves in that is different than even a few years ago. And it has to be said, the irony of spending five minutes each debating if we will hear a five minute, five minute delegation was not lost on me. I really think we need to reconsider our policy. But again, tonight we are not debating the issue of Sue Bay Oil. To my colleagues, your, your opinion on this, it just doesn't matter tonight. It's irrelevant. What does matter tonight is what your opinion is on democracy and the importance of hearing from our residents. You can or cannot support the delegation, but let's hear the group out. So I really hope that my colleagues can join me in voting yes. Let this delegation speak.
we we know that it's something that's important to our constituents and deserves to be heard. And as Mr. Arshman said, uh, hearing from our citizens is part of the democratic process. We do hear non-jurisdictional items all the time. Um, I personally heard from child care organizations on Ten Dollar a Day, which we all support. We heard um, I've actually been part myself of delegations on climate care, which we all support. And we have been in the past um, in favor of taking things to UBCM and FCM when they aren't in the jurisdiction on behalf of our victims. But this is jurisdiction. We are specifically being asked to take part in a municipal case that three local governments are already signed on to. Um, as was mentioned, others are considering it. And there are many, although I know it's different in the states, there are many um, local governments in the states as well as the states themselves that are starting to take this um, initiatives on because it's costing the city so much to deal with impacts on our citizens and our infrastructure as well as our services like fire due to these climate catastrophes. Um, what really has a history of supporting climate justice, this is very much climate justice, and climate related costs are definitely part of that. So I think it's whether or not we believe in it personally, I think it's really important. I presented a background brief with a point of with every point of contact that council members have had with uh, the force of nature and its colleagues in their Sufi oil campaign. And we've heard twice and responded twice to requests. So I'm very supportive of hearing what the delegation is asking for and what they have to say this third time that they've come to um, Port Moody City Council. So I'll absolutely be supportive of hearing from the delegation. All in favor? That is carried unanimously. Thank you, Council. The Sioux Big Oil delegation will be making its presentation to Port Moody City Council on February 13th at 7.30 p.m. If you support making big oil companies accountable for their actions, come out and show your support. For more information, stay tuned as host Nancy Furness interviews Mark Norbury and Ben Perry, who are spearheading the Port Moody Sioux Big Oil campaign. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nancy Furness and this is We've Got Issues. Our interviews today are taking place at Coquitlam Public Library and we are on the traditional, ancestral and unceded lands of Coquitlam First Nation. So we'd like to thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to care for the lands and the waters and all that lie above and below. Today I'm joined by Mark Norbury who is a resident of Port Moody and he's concerned with the effects of climate change. He's here today to talk to us about the Sioux Big Oil campaign. So thank you for joining us today Mark. Thank you for having me Nancy. Can you tell us a little bit about the goal of the Sioux Big Oil campaign? What is it you're trying to achieve? Yes, well, many people today are rightly concerned about climate change and, but feel powerless to do anything about it. So um, the Sioux Big Oil campaign is raising a class action lawsuit against the oil companies. Now, these are rich and powerful companies, but they're still subject to the laws of the land. And so basically, the aim of the uh, Super Gold campaign is twofold. First of all, to help the cities and municipalities to recover the costs of climate change. And these are very real costs um, through uh, climate adaption, climate mitigation. Um, and secondly, it, it creates um, an awareness and it helps to um, create a, a proper balance, a proper fairness, um, because the oil companies are making profits, they're making huge profits, um, but they, these profits are, don't take into account the, the costs to society uh, in general. Um, so there are huge costs involved with burning fossil fuels and uh, society in general is, is having to pay these costs. And so it addresses the fairness of the situation because although they're, they're making money, um, it's a it's not real money. Um, it's, uh, it's a false economy. Um, and so by raising a, a class action lawsuit, it actually addresses the unfairness of the situation. And so the oil companies actually pay the, the true costs for their products. That's a really interesting concept. You're talking about equity and fairness. Um, this is a 
class action lawsuit, which of course takes um, funding and a campaign takes funding. Can you tell us a little bit about who else is involved in this? Who are your partners? And also, where's the funding coming from to drive this campaign? Well, within Port Moody, um, the, the two main partners are the Laudato Si Circle of Port Moody, of which I am a member, and also Force of Nature in the Tri-Cities. Um, so these two organizations have been working together and it's a, a partnership that's been working really well. Um, we have learned so much from them um, because they have such a great experience in just the whole area of environmental campaigning. And we are supported by the Secretariat, which are West Coast Environmental Law. They have um, lawyers there who actually have been working on the Subi Oil campaign across the whole of British Columbia. Um, so the three of us have been working well together. Um, but across the whole province, we have about um, 20 communities who are involved in the Subi Gold campaign. And it's basically volunteers. I'm a volunteer. Um, most of the people involved are, are, are just unpaid uh, volunteers, just concerned citizens across uh, British Columbia. And in addition to that, we also have 40 endorsing and partnering organizations. Uh, you'll probably be familiar with the names, Fridays for Future, the Climate Emergency Unit, Neighbours United, Stand Earth, and the Union of BC Indian Chiefs. Oh, that's an interesting um, group of, of people that have come together for a common cause. You mentioned the Laudato Sea Circle. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that is? Yes, the Port Moody Laudato Sea Circle was founded two years ago. Um, I was one of the co-founders, and uh, it's actually part of a global movement called the Laudato Sea Movement. Um, that's a, a Roman Catholic organization um, and it's inspired by Pope Francis' own teachings on the subject. Um, it's named after his encyclical that came out in 2015. Well, thank you, because I think that's one area where environmentalists, maybe we have fallen a little bit by the wayside in not including sort of the spiritual side to connecting people with nature and with the environment. So it's really nice to hear that you've been active in that and that there's something happening there. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, it's actually also working at the national level. So we have a national coordinator. Um, and yeah, so it works at all levels, global, national, and local. So we're actually based in Port Moody. Um, we're actually based at uh, St. Joseph's Catholic Church, which is in Port Moody on Moody Street. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, one question I had was, you've been talking about this class action lawsuit, and this is um, where a lot of different partners are involved, and it, they can be very complicated and take a long time to resolve. And right now, we're in a climate crisis, and I was wondering, can you tell a little bit about, is this going to happen fast enough? Um, will we be able to see results and actions quickly enough? That's a very good question, Nancy. Thank you for asking that. Um, as soon as a class action lawsuit is filed, the oil companies have a responsibility to notify their uh, investors. And so that immediately sends a message to them of the financial and legal risk in, involved in uh, selling oil. Um, also, it's better to start now rather than waiting any longer. Um, we owe it to uh, our future generations to actually take action right away because as things go on, the climate change is going to exacerbate and, and, get, and get worse and worse. So we need to take action sooner rather than later. Um, but the other thing is, big oil may actually choose to settle out of court. And so it, it may actually take a lot, you know, it might be a lot quicker than that. We, we may not have to wait years. But also, as all this is going on, um, as, you know, as, as this class action lawsuit is filed, um, it immediately creates awareness um, in the media and also in the, in the public in general. And so people start to become aware of what the oil companies have been doing over the last several decades. Um, it, it gets exposed, it uh, takes the lid off their uh, misinformation campaign. Um, and also it, uh, it gets, you know, regular residents just to be more aware of what they themselves are doing in, in terms of uh, climate change. So hopefully this will actually slow down climate change. Wow, thank you for that really comprehensive and enlightening answer because there's so many reasons to do this that you've just mentioned. Um, and I love the, 
your point about that we need to take action now. We've been kicking the can down the road for a number of decades now, so it's really nice to see some accountability hopefully coming into play soon. You had mentioned, Mark, that there are a number of communities throughout the province, I believe, who are also involved in this lawsuit. Can you tell us a little bit about who those communities are? And also, um, can you tell us specifically why you chose to focus on Port Moody for your campaign? I know you're a resident, but is, is, if there's other reasons why you chose Port Moody. Yes, yeah, certainly. Well, so far to date, uh, three communities have actually gone ahead and, and uh, um, adopted the uh, class action lawsuit. Um, those are Gibsons, View Royal, and Squamish. Um, and so it, it, they've signed on, um, and there are several others who are considering doing so already. Now, I've lived in Port Moody many years, and I have noticed that our council is very good when it comes to climate action. Um, they are very climate change aware uh, in terms of a council. In fact, our present mayor, Megan Lati, was actually uh, involved in um, the Climate Action Plan, uh, which was published in 2020. So I have every confidence in the current council um, that they will go ahead and, and sign on to this, this lawsuit. Um, I think we have a very good chance uh, of that. Um, and also, other cities are in the sidelines. They're watching. Um, and we have very concerned citizens in some of the surrounding uh, cities like Burnaby, uh, Surrey, uh, New Westminster, and even Vancouver. Um, so they're watching what happens here. And for myself, I like to think of Port Moody as the gateway city to the lower mainland. Um, it's, it's kind of appropriate that it is a port. Um, so we can think of it as a gateway. Um, because if it's successful here, then there's a good chance it will, be, it will start to become successful in some of the other cities in the lower mainland. Yeah, thank you for that. And I think we do owe kudos to Port Moody for being quite progressive when it comes to climate action and climate change. They do have a climate action plan that they've recently um, worked on and published and done some really good work. So um, I guess, if can you talk a little bit about some of the effects that we're already seeing as far as climate change goes that are specific to Port Moody, what we're seeing now, some of the issues, and then also um, what can we expect to see if we don't take action? Um, yeah, well, the Climate Action Plan and the Extreme Weather Resilience Plan published by uh, Port Moody Council, um, they have identified the costs of climate change, which could be from anywhere from $1 million to $8 million. Um, so we've got to find that money from somewhere. Um, also, the Insurance Bureau of Canada um, says that BC as a whole is expected to pay $5.3 billion per year. Okay, That's not just one-off, that is per year over the coming years on climate adaption. So these are huge amounts of costs. And the way I think of the CB Gold campaign is like an insurance premium. You know, I pay $2,000 per year for my house on, on, the, on the hope that you know, no tree is going to fall on it. But if a tree does fall on it, I can claim the cost back. But that's something that might happen. Um, so we can think of this as an insurance premium. So we're, paying, we're asking Port Moody to pay $36,000. That is a very small amount of money compared with the huge costs of climate change and mitigation and adaption that, that we are expecting. Um, and it, but it differs uh, in some ways from an insurance premium because with an insurance premium it's about something that might happen. We know that climate change is happening, it's something that will happen. Um, so for me that's, that's a, a non-brainer, it's a no-brainer. Um, we're asking to pay $36,000 and we're going to receive back um, millions of dollars um, from the oil companies in, in terms of uh, fairness for the, for the cost of climate change. Yeah, I think almost you could think of it rather than insurance, almost as an investment in the future. And I know that Port Moody is um, replacing the boardwalk in along sort of Rocky Point Park area. And because the waters and the tides are getting higher and we're seeing more extreme weather events, and uh, so there are like a lot of really um, you know, discrete things that we can see happening and changes happening. Can you tell us a little bit about the campaign? What have you done so far in the campaign? And also, what are you looking to do in the future to further the campaign? Yeah, I first got involved in the campaign last year. Um, 
and uh, I contacted uh, Force of Nature in October to gauge their interest in it and they responded with a load of enthusiasm and so I'm part of a, an environmental organization called the Laudato Sea Settle of Port Moody as I've already mentioned and so the two of us have been working together, these two partner organizations. Um, we put the delegation request to Port Moody City Council in December um, and then I was quite surprised when two days later I received a response from them saying that they claimed it was non-jurisdictional and so they rejected it initially. So this just means that it's not something that they have the authority over or decision-making capability over? That's right, that's what they thought. So that came as a complete shock and, and surprise to us um, because it clearly is jurisdictional. We're, we're talking about costs that the city is going to be paying out. And so we questioned that decision. Um, we didn't get any uh, justification for why they had decided it was non-jurisdictional. And one of the city councillors was very kind enough to retrieve the delegation request and she proposed that it be debated. And so it was debated at the uh, Port Moody City Council meeting on the 23rd of January. Uh, we had a lot of supporters come out for that. Um, and we had a few people giving a two minute speech about why it should be uh, regarded as jurisdictional. Um, and the vote was unanimous. Every single city councillor uh, said that, that it, they thought it was jurisdictional. And so that was, the, that was the last step. And now the next step is actually on the 13th of February when it will actually go to be debated itself. The actual delegation request will now go forward and it will be debated at the, um, the council meeting. And so we're inviting many people to come to City Hall at, uh, to that meeting. So come down at 6.30 p.m. on the 13th of February. Uh, we'll take some group photos and uh, the council meeting will start at 7 o'clock. Awesome. So you're welcoming other people to join by coming at 6.30 on February 13th to Port Moody City Hall. And then um, you can be part of the Sioux Big Oil Rally and hopefully the delegation will be heard by council on that night and then hopefully we can see some more progress after that. Um, now, Mark, so many people are concerned about climate change, but so many people just don't take action or don't feel that they, their actions matter. Can you tell us a little bit about what inspired you? I know you've talked about the Ladado Sea Circles. Can you tell us a little bit more about what inspired you to take action? Well, like many people today, I am seriously concerned about climate change because we as a species are, dis are destroying our own habitat. Um, this habitat that we depend upon for the basics of life, like food, uh, water and shelter. Um, and thousands of people across the globe today are dying. Um, thousands of people die each year from climate change related uh, effects uh, like famine, drought. Um, storms and also th uh, millions of people more are, have the, had their lives uprooted through climate change. Um, and so it's a serious issue affecting the world today. We can think of it as another pandemic. And so at the meantime, the oil companies are making huge amounts of profits. Um, now these oil, are very, these oil companies are very rich and powerful, but they are still subject to the law of the land. And the Subic Oil Campaign is being done through the legal system of, of the land. And so that's how it is very effective. So for me, this is a way I can really make a change in the world. And I invite many other people to come and, and make a change as well. It sends a message to the shareholders of the oil companies. And for myself, I've been wanting to take part in some action that will have the most effect. And I see this as a good way to spend my spare time. Well, thank you. I think you're inspiring. You will inspire a lot of other people just to um, follow along with you because it sounds like it's a really nice partnership between Force of Nature, the Ladado Sea Circle that you lead, and also West Coast Environmental Law to um, pull together that legal end of things. Can you tell us if other people want to get involved in um, this Sioux Big Oil campaign? How can they contact you or what should they do in order to um, join forces with you? Several things. Um, first of all, sign the declaration. So go to subigoil.ca, go to the website, just click on the, the declaration. Um, very simple, but very powerful, very effective. 
because it's sending a message to our city councils and our municipalities that uh, people are concerned about this issue. Secondly, write to Port Moody City Council expressing your support of the campaign. Just a quick email is all, that, all that's needed. Um, thirdly, whether or not you actually live in Port Moody, come and join us on the 13th of February at 6.30pm at the City Hall. Um, we're going to do some group photos, but just the numbers of people will, will, will show that people are concerned. We'll all be identified by our green armbands um, and it will show to the City Council that there are residents who are really concerned about this issue and uh, are trying to encourage them to, 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 to come on to the class action lawsuit. But even if you don't live in Port Moody, uh, please uh, send a message, write an email, send a letter to your own City Council and get them to join the class action lawsuit. This campaign is across the whole of BC. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today, and I will see you at the Sioux Big Oil um, rally on the 13th, and I just thank you so much for taking the time to come and share with us a little bit more about this campaign. You're welcome. Thank you. So thank you so much for joining us. This is We've Got Issues, and we've been talking to Mark Norbury, who has um, shared with us some information about the Sioux Big Oil campaign. Thank you. Today we're joined by Ben Perry, who is with Force of Nature Alliance. And so thank you so much for joining us today, Ben. Thanks for having me, Nancy. Ben, can you tell us a little bit about Force of Nature Alliance? What is the goal of the group? And is it um, specific to the Tri-Cities, or are you part of a larger organization? Yeah, so uh, Force of Nature Alliance is regional for Metro Vancouver. Um, when we started, I, Port Moody was, uh, or Tri-Cities was a big part of it, but it's definitely starting in Port Moody. Um, and uh, I came on a couple years in. Our goals are to combat climate change. We, yeah, we started with um, opposing pipelines and getting involved in politics. And um, I can remember the switch. We were on the do knocking on doors, talking to people about pipelines, and there was a lot of discussion about local politics and decisions happening at the city level. So we moved into a campaign called Mission Transition, where we were talking about getting cities off carbon and getting cities to set climate targets to be net zero by 2050. And we succeeded. Uh, Port Moody, Coquitlam, Surrey, Vancouver, Richmond, North Shore cities, Langley, all, uh, all other cities around the world and the region also have adopted these climate targets. Wow, congratulations. That's um, great work and a big step in the right direction. Ben, can you tell us a little bit about your partnership with Coquitlam Library? Yeah, so um, we've been uh, hosting, co-hosting with the library, at the library, um, these cinema events with speakers. Um, and so we've done, uh, we, we had a film about grief and climate change and we had a local author come to talk. Um, we did one called, a film called Eating Our Way to Extinction, uh, which was a real eye-opener for me. Um, I'd always heard people talk about how reducing the amount of meat you eat is really good for climate change. Um, I, didn't, I didn't realize at the time, but apparently uh, it's in the top 10 solutions for climate change. And that, that film really showed that. You could see um, the edge of the Amazon forest or the edge of the soybean fields where the soybean fields were growing into the Amazon forest at an alarming rate. Um, and 70% of the world's soybeans are being fed to animals to produce meat. So I think ethically, um, health-wise, and now environmentally, there's a push and a reason to become less of a meat eater. Yes, definitely. And it was a, it was a big eye-opener for me. Um, yeah, so we, we, and we had some speakers there from uh, Food Not Bombs and a, a SFU student group that's involved in food security. So we always try and get a speaker and some discussion. Our next one's going to be in March, and we're uh, showing the film Fracking the Peace. Oh, excellent. So we'll have to keep our eyes open for that. That's coming up. Yeah, so there should be information on that on our website. Um, and the library will also be promoting it as well. And we'll have a good discussion about the expansion of the natural gas industry in BC, which is at odds with reducing our em the emissions we're putting out here. Well, we will watch out for those.
Can you tell us a little bit about some of the issues we're seeing with respect to climate change? What are we witnessing here, right here in the Tri-Cities? Yeah, so I mean in the Tri-Cities we're experiencing heat domes, dangerous heat that's um, hurting people. Um, we're having droughts that's causing our, our, well, our trees to change. Trees are dying. Um, you know, it's, it's hurting our forests. Um, you know, those are the kind of the environmental costs. Um, and then there's indirect from the environment social costs. Um, I should mention, you know, rising food prices. Um, and uh, we're looking at migration, migration crises too. And some people say the refugees from Syria, that conflict was kicked off partly by a drought and farmers coming to Damascus to demand support from the government. And that kind of started the unrest in Syria back how many, five, five years ago or seven years ago? Yeah. Well, I think you're right. There's so many connections um, when we start talking about climate change and all of the things that our weather is connected to. We've also seen unprecedented forest fires and smoky air. And um, I think, you know, even the heat dome, and you're talking about social aspects, people who live on their own and, you know, maybe don't have access to air conditioning or a cool space. So definitely we're seeing a lot of, a lot of issues and in the social as well as environmental. There's one term that comes up all the time and it's net zero carbon emissions. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means? I, I think some people, it's, it's a little bit confusing. Can you explain that to us? Sure, I mean, um, there are some ways that carbon, like ca carbon in the atmosphere is what uh, makes global warming happen or, or uh, climate change, because uh, it tends to hold heat. Um, and there are ways that carbon can be taken out of the atmosphere. There's really expensive kind of uh, ways that you can do it industrially, um, but plants and trees, of course, but also algae and the and all kinds of plants, including vegetables, are sucking carbon out of the air and out of the atmosphere. Um, but we're putting out more carbon than the plants can take in because we're digging it up from the grounds. Uh, carbon that might have been deposited there millions of billions of years ago by plants a long time ago. And so we're increasing, we're growing the amount of carbon in the atmosphere every year. And we've been doing it since humans started industrial scale burning of things. Right. So in the overall scheme of things, where do we stand in the Tri-Cities? Are we doing better or worse or just where are we in the overall scheme of things? Well, I think we're starting to change, which is good. Um, so uh, cities in Canada are responsible for like 70% of, of carbon emissions. And um, uh, in Metro Vancouver, the two biggest sources are buildings uh, from the heating systems and personal vehicles. So the cars and trucks we drive every day. Um, so we're making some progress. Cars and trucks, we're starting to see more EVs. We've got SkyTrain. Hopefully, we're getting more, more transit, transit options. Yeah. Um, and people, uh, in terms of homes, people are starting to put in heat pumps, retrofit. New buildings are starting to be set up with heat pumps. Can you talk a little bit about some of the actions that cities specifically could take to um, get us closer to that net zero? Yeah, so the provincial government has set up something called Zero Carbon Step Code, which is a campaign we're actually working on in Coquitlam. Um, to get this because this zero carbon step code is like optional. It's got steps that the cities can adopt. There's a certain level that will be mandatory at some point, uh, but cities can adopt it much earlier to much higher More level. Quickly or slower. Yeah. And it's not about old buildings, it's about new buildings. So why build stuff now that uses a gas heating system when we know we need to go electric? That's one thing. I mean, the other thing is about uh, if we can and if we can retrofit and change our heating systems. That's like a big chunk of the battle. Talking about putting in a heat pump. Yeah, so an electric heat pump, uh, especially with our clean electricity in BC, that's a zero emission uh, way of heating your home. And you get uh, air conditioning too, which is important in the heat domes. Um, but the other thing is the vehicles, and cities have uh, certain power uh, related to vehicles. They can set rules about how much parking needs to be provided. Um, they can design their cities in ways that make it easier for people to use transit, you know, as long as they're given the freedom by the provincial government to do so. And there's been some, some changes to that recently, but with the 
provincial government's bills 44 through 47, sort of telling cities how they have to densify. I don't know if they got it right for climate or housing. I mean, I think better is to create a slightly denser, medium density, walkable area where people would make the choice and say, I can live without a car, save that $10,000 a year, use transit, there's frequent bus or, you know, a bus that goes to SkyTrain and all the shops are nearby. Well, I think you're right. I think that it's this Bill 44, 46 and 47 that you're talking about. It's a top down, um, it's implementing a, a required minimum density, mandatory minimum densities. But I think cities have put a lot of planning into place in some cases, some better than others, to create those communities. Um, you know, and things like concerns with the urban forest, with this densification. Do trees have a part to play in climate change? Yeah, Nancy, I know you love trees, and I do too. Maybe not as much as you, but almost as much. And um, so I, I think trees are really important for climate change. Of course, they take carbon out of the atmosphere, and they help to keep our cities cool during the heat domes. That's proven, like, really a lot cooler. Um, I do think there's a misconception that we're going to plant trees and, and get ourselves out of the carbon problem, that there's going to be enough carbon sucked out of the atmosphere. So I did a little math on it. A mature tree maybe takes in 50 pounds of carbon a year, whereas a furnace for a home puts out 200 times that much carbon in a year. So we'd need to plant 200 trees to offset one gas furnace. I don't think we're going to do that in Tri-Cities. Well, thank you for clarifying that. I would love to see that happen, but I agree it's probably not likely to happen. Um, and I just want to put the last word in for trees here, that they do a lot more than just, I mean, they are taking carbon out of the atmosphere, but they're also cooling our hot urban environments and helping us to manage stormwater, good for our mental health and a lot of other things. So um, they do have a, a small part to play, as you say, in, in taking carbon out of the city air. So Ben, can you tell us, we've talked a little bit about what cities can do. What can individuals do? Like what can we do ourselves on an individual basis to um, help draw down that carbon? Yeah, I mean, individuals have powers to, but collective action is the best. But I mean, within the city, of course, the, if you can change your heating system, or if you can group together with the people in your building to help change the, it might might take a work at the strata level. Um, if you can find ways to not use a gas vehicle, if you can afford an electric vehicle, or if you can choose to live without one. But these are all decisions that depend on what how our city's built. So we need to take action. We need to take, we need to tell uh, the city of Coquitlam, the city of Port Moody, the city of Port Coquitlam that we want to be able to live car free and that we want all new buildings to be built without gas. And then I mean in terms of lifestyle, you know, there's a lot of things where we're purchasing products uh, that have a carbon footprint. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think it's fair to ask the individuals that care to do all the work when it's not even going to be enough because there's people that don't care, don't believe in it and they're going to be emitting enough carbon to continue global warming. So it has to be collective action. So we need some um, policy in place by government. We each need to step up and take responsibility. It's going to take the whole community to um, fight this one. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the initiatives that Force of Nature Alliance is involved with locally? Yeah, so uh, like I said, we're hoping to get gas out of buildings. Uh, in Coquitlam, we're focusing right now with a partner called Neighbors United on uh, encouraging Coquitlam to adopt the zero carbon step code at the highest level so new buildings will be built with uh, zero emission heating systems. Um, but you know we're doing that at the regional level. North Shore is doing the same thing right now in Burnaby. Um, Metro Vancouver is just, they've been working on this too. There's a very pro um, progressive group of people there. They just actually, unfortunately they had a vote that didn't pass where they were going to do more consultation to maybe start creating a regulation on the biggest buildings. 2% of buildings in Metro Vancouver, these really tall towers, mm -hmm. emit like 35% of Major carbon emitters. emissions. Yeah, And so um, Metro Vancouver has the power to regulate air quality, and so they're actually able to regulate emissions. Interesting. Um, that vote 
was sort of stalled in the last vote, but we did have some local, like um, the Re Meg Megan Lottie from Port Moody voted in favor of it. Um, it's going to take some more work and force of nature being regional, we're, we want to influence the Metro Vancouver votes as well. So, and we could use all the help we could get. So write a letter to your city council, they send a representative to Metro Vancouver. Excellent. So some action that we can take yeah. ourselves to encourage our governments to make those proper um, decisions. Get gas out of buildings, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think you're also involved in a Sioux Big Oil campaign that's running right now? Yes. So we've been supporting um, the Sioux Big Oil campaign. Is a it's, a, I think, a BC-wide campaign because uh, it's focused on the courts of BC, the jurisdiction in BC that al would allow this to happen, the court structured so that cities could actually sue oil companies. Um, and a local activist group called Ladauto Sea Circle in Port Moody uh, was doing Sioux Big Oil and they contacted us and said, hey, could you help us? And we said, of course, we're Force of Nature Alliance. We want to be in alliance with what you're doing, which is great. And we think, you know, Port Moody has always been progressive um, on ahead of the curve on climate. And uh, there's a number of members of that council, the mayor, and who've taken action on climate in the past. And, um, voted in favor of things like climate targets and we're hopeful that this th they'll do this sue big oil when enough cities join this lawsuit it'll go into action so yeah. and i think yeah. there's a rally on february 13th yes. at port moody city hall to have a del to listen to the delegation um to support that sue big oil campaign and Ben, can you tell us how can people get in touch with you if they want to join Force of Nature Alliance or if there's volunteer opportunities, how would they contact you? Yes, so you can uh, find us on social media. There's the regional Force of Nature social media. There's also just look up Tri-Cities Force of Nature on, on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can send us messages there. Um, we also have a website called forceofnaturealliancewordpress.com. Well, Ben, thank you so much for sharing that with us and for telling us a little bit more about Force of Nature. And I hope that we'll be able to talk again sometime in the future. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is We've Got Issues, and we've been talking to Ben Perry about Force of Nature Alliance. On Tuesday, February 13th, once again, concerned Port Moody citizens, along with a coalition of environmental groups that included Force of Nature Alliance and the Ladado Sea Circle, were at Port Moody City Hall to make sure that the council heard their pleas for the city to take part in a class action lawsuit to seek compensation from big oil interests. Sue big oil! 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 Sue big oil. I'll call the meeting to order. Thank you, everybody, for the meeting of February 13th, 2024. Uh, we'll start off with the territorial land acknowledgement. The City of Port Moody carries out our business on the ancestral and unceded homelands of the Kwekwetlam, Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, Squamish, Haitsi, Kwantlen, Kikate, and Stolo peoples, and extends appreciation for the opportunity to work in this territory. Next item is agenda. Does somebody want to move the agenda? It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed, carried, thank you. We'll move into public input. Policy, I'm looking at the speakers list and I, I noticed that um, Mark Norbury is on there. Um, this is public input, it's not the delegation. So if you wanted to speak, you can, um, but if this was intended for the delegation, then that'll, we'll get to that at the next item. So I'll call uh, Mark Norbury if you'd like to speak. If you would like to speak to council, you have two minutes. Um, please state your name and city of residence for the record. Uh, Mark Norbury and I live in Port Moody. Okay. I would like to say a few words about the Sioux Big Oil proposal, but this is just as public input. Yep. I support this because it will save our city money. Uh, climate change costs are with us, whether we like it or not. Some cities and municipalities are simply reacting to climate costs as they hit them. Port Moody, on the other hand, is very proactive because it has a climate action plan, which yourselves, Mayor Lati, Councillor Lubick and others have been very instrumental in initiating. So we are at least aware of what the expected costs will be, and they have been calculated to be anywhere up to $8.6 million. 
The super goal proposal is not about paying more climate costs or paying more towards climate mitigation and adaption. No, it's actually about saving costs and getting a good return on investment. Fossil fuel companies, through their operations and products, are responsible for about 30% of greenhouse gases, but they're currently paying nothing to mitigate these costs. A successful lawsuit might give us 30% of 8.6 million, which is about 2.6 million. Port Moody's contribution would be $1 per population, so that would come to about $36,000. We pay this amount and can expect to receive back $2.6 million. That's a good return on investment. Now, I'm a businessman, and I understand that. Who would not pass up on this deal? And it's not 36000 per year. It's just a one-off single payment. So we know for sure that climate costs are going to hit us, but this lawsuit will significantly reduce the impact of these costs. 36000 is a small price to pay, and it doesn't even have to be paid for from this year's budget, but just needs to be earmarked ready for when the lawsuit is paid for. Thank you. Thank you. I would move, uh, look for a motion to receive public input. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Post carried. That's a new process for us. Um, next item is the delegation. Uh, Sue Big Oil. And just a reminder, you have five minutes. And I believe that we have received um, your package. There you go. Go ahead. All right, good evening, Mayor Lati and Port Moody City Councillors. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you tonight about the Sioux Big Oil Campaign Port Moody on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples. Uh, my name is Justin Arsenault, and I am speaking to you tonight as a concerned Port Moody resident and as a member of the Port Moody Laudato Sea Circle based at St. Joseph's Catholic Parish. Andrew Gage from West Coast Environmental Law is also here with me tonight to help answer any questions you may have. Tonight, we are asking you to vote in favor of Port Moody joining the Sue Big Oil campaign. Sue Big Oil is a new campaign that launched in June 2022. You may have heard from other climate campaigns in the past, but this one is a bit different, so I hope you will listen with an open mind. This campaign aims to gather municipalities together from across BC to launch a class action lawsuit against major oil companies in order to recover the costs we face locally from climate change. British Columbians have already uh, seen firsthand some of the costs we face due to climate change. Here in Port Moody, we've seen our beloved boardwalk damaged and requiring replacement because of high water. We lived through the heat dome of 2021, and we face increasing risks of flooding, landslides, and forest fires. Facing those dangers, I am grateful that the city has already started the hard work of preparing for climate change. Our climate action plan identifies a number of risks and eight focus areas for adapting to and mitigating climate change and outlines our expected costs. Considering just the costs of adapting, we are looking at between $1 million and $8.6 million in costs. This is in the coming decade alone and does not include many other costs that are still being identified. These costs will only rise. So without additional funds, we have, will be faced with a choice between raising taxes, cutting services, or leaving Port Moody vulnerable to climate impacts, all of which leaves residents and businesses on the hook. Meanwhile, scientists are increasingly able to quantify the specific contributions of individual companies through both their operations and products to climate change. Just 90 entities, mostly fossil fuel companies, are responsible for almost two-thirds of human-caused greenhouse gas emissions. Many of these companies were put on notice that their products were causing climate change in 1959 by Dr. Edward Teller. By the 70s and 80s, they had detailed information about the impacts of burning fossil fuels, but continued with business as usual, making massive profits. When government started taking action in the late 80s and 90s, these companies engaged in a well-documented campaign of misinformation and lobbying to prevent climate action. Even now, fossil fuel companies continue to put their short-term profits over the health of our communities. Recently, BP, Shell, and Suncor rolled back their climate commitments because they are literally making too much money from fossil fuels. It is completely justified for us to ask these companies to pay their share of the costs of climate change. Sue Big Oil aims to do just that. So why should we get involved in Port Moody? First, class action cases like Sue Big Oil can succeed. We've seen it in lawsuits against tobacco and opioids. We saw it in the Netherlands in 2021 when the environmental organization Milieu Defensi won their lawsuit against Shell in Dutch courts. To date, there are over 40 local and state governments suing fossil fuel companies in the US, as well as similar cases in Germany and Switzerland. In Canada, 
28 law professors have written a letter to local governments explaining that there is a legal basis in Can Canadian law for Subic oil. It is also financially manageable. Port Moody would pledge just $1 per resident, around $36,000, and this would only be required when a local government steps up as lead plaintiff. These funds would be enough to get the case to the certification stage, when a judge would confirm that the case has merit. If the case does not clear that hurdle, nothing further would be required. If the case goes forward, there would be a range of fundraising options and a future council would have no obligation to make further contributions, but could choose to do so with the benefit of the judge's ruling on the strength of the case. For a local government that chooses to be the plaintiff, BC's class action law protects the parties from having to pay a portion of the other side's legal fees if unsuccessful. Subic oil is also popular. According to a poll from 2022, British Columbians, when British Columbians understand that suing fossil fuel companies is a way to get them to pay some of the costs that otherwise fall to taxpayers, they support the idea of local governments bringing such a lawsuit with broad support across the political spectrum and across the province. The benefits of filing such an action are almost immediate. Early on, a judge will need to confirm that the case has merit, giving both the local governments and fossil fuel industries a clear indication that this case can be won and changing investor behavior. When successful, it will get needed resources for our community to ensure that we can protect our residents and businesses from climate change impacts. The communities of Gibsons, of U Royal, Squamish, just last week Qualicum Beach, and just this week Slocan have already joined the campaign, and there are more to come. Tonight, we have the opportunity for Port Moody to join Subic Oil. I urge you to take this step to secure a safe, vibrant and fiscally responsible future for our city. You are amazing at keeping it within five minutes. That is like the beep. That's the flash. Good job. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to open it up to council if they have any questions. Uh, Councillor Knowles and then Councillor Agtra. Thank you so much for that. Um, I actually really enjoyed that presentation. Um, I understand how passionate so many of you are about this topic. Um, and in fact, I think we're all passionate about the effects and mitigation of climate change. Um, so, I mean, without further ado, I'm, I'm prepared to move um, that we receive uh, the delegation for information and maybe refer to staff for next steps. Okay, so it's been moved, received, and, re and forwarded to, or refer referred to staff. Well, it's not quite option two because option two. This is referring to staff, um, and yes, and it will come back to council, to subsequent council, but there's, it's going to go to staff first, so they can, okay, it'll come back to a future council meeting, and we will let you know when it does. Um, okay, so that's been moved and seconded. Um, I have Councillor Agtra, uh, or Councillor Knowles, did you have anything else to add? Uh, not at this time, no, I think, um, I think I'm, I'm happy with it coming forward at another meeting. Thank you. Councillor Agtra. Uh, I was just going to do the same thing, move it for another council meeting, so I'll keep my comments until then. Okay, thank you. Councillor Norbecki. Thank you. Um, I mean, I much would have preferred that we, we, we dealt with this tonight, and, and the reason being, I you know, I feel that we heard all the pertinent information that we needed to hear regarding the legalities of it, um, and in terms of a, of a delay, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think that that's necessary. Um, it doesn't sound like I have support for that on the council table, so I'll, I'll go ahead and um, support our conversation about this in a future time. But I, I want to thank the delegation very much. I think it's very important we don't forget how you got here tonight. Uh, you know, there, previously this delegation wasn't allowed to present because it was deemed non-jurisdictional per city policy. Um, you know, I, I believe that went through the mayor and, and city manager, but you know, we were able to bring that back to council for reconsideration and, and hear from the delegation tonight, but that came from your perseverance and commitment to this issue, and I look forward very much to discussing this further with my council colleagues, and just thank you so much. Thank you. Councilor Lubeck. Um, I just wanted to, and I can't see anybody, but um, I just wanted to say thank you to the delegation for, for coming forward and, and also your perseverance. I think, you know, it was great to hear the the precedents that have been set both in Canada, in across Europe, and in the United States, um, as well as understanding that there are 28 law professors that have weighed in on this. And I think, um, you know, this very much harkens back to me to BC being the first jurisdiction that um, sued big tobacco in order to um, claim the health care costs that comes with that. Um, I wanted to just ask, um, as far as some, uh, and, and I do appreciate you talking to the legal professors, but are there any um, 
legal considerations that some of the other plaintiff, uh, some of the other potential um, folks who are taking part in this um, potential class action lawsuit have brought up? Oh, I'll, uh, please. Go ahead. Um, kind of an open-ended question, so I'm trying <laughs> to think how best to, to um, comment. I mean, I think that, um, you know, obviously this is, um, for, the, for the party that ultimately becomes the lead plaintiff, this is a big undertaking. Um, for the municipalities that are standing in support of the campaign and putting some resources to it, it, it may be much uh, less significant uh, uh, undertaking in terms of the actual demands on resources or time. So there's certainly questions from local governments that I think um, are, feel like we're asking them to be the lead plaintiff, plaintiff and, and at this stage we're actually just trying to demonstrate that there is support so that when a lead plaintiff comes forward that they will feel that they, you know, they will know that there's support from other local governments, they can, they can see that, the court can see there's a class that wants to see this go forward. So I think a lot of the concerns come from the assumption that we're asking people, the municipalities to do more right now than we actually are. Um, that being said, you know, when a municipality comes forward and does act as lead plaintiff, I mean, obviously there's staff time involved in uh, you know, uh, giving instructions, hiring a legal team, which uh, would be you know, specialists in class action law, uh, law and, and uh, civil litigation, and, and therefore not West Coast Environmental Law. We're here to push you to consider this, but we're not the ones being hired. Um, and there's a lot of questions about making sure that they understand what those um, demands are. Um, you know, at this stage, there is not a local government that's indicated they're going to play that role. We're going to continue, and that's uh, as Justin said. Said, um, you know, any funds you pledge would be contingent on that actually happening. Um, not sure I pulled the answer to that question or whether something you, specific. No, you definitely for. brought. It, you definitely touched on the things I was hoping you would. Thank you so much, well, Councillor Morrison. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I also want to thank everybody for coming out this evening. It, there's been a strong contingent of um, vocal proponents towards uh, mitigating chi climate change, especially at the last couple meetings that you've been out. And I do want to appreciate and uh, acknowledge the fact that we are in a, a climate crisis. This is a climate emergency and that different actions are going to be needed across the spectrum to be able to get ahead of, uh, of this and hopefully if we can't slow it down or can't stop it, slow it down so that we can create a better future for our children, ourselves and of course future generations. Um, so I do want to thank you for coming out tonight and I'm looking forward to a wholesome discussion with my colleagues in regards to this, uh, this request and the hearing back from staff in that regard. Um, and also, uh, I'm not a huge fan of form letters. I know we did get a whole bunch of them, but to see how many postal codes there were that were from Port Moody, where people were going onto the site and, and sending in, uh, even although it was a form letter, still means that there is interest and there is some, some passion behind trying to come up with that change and, and whatever means that happens to be getting change to happen. Um, it, it was good to, good to see people getting involved. And uh, I hope that can conversation continues going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I want to thank you for, for being here tonight. I, I think that you cannot, we can't underestimate um, the damage that fossil fuels have done in terms of climate change and anything that we can do um, in terms of trying to mitigate the costs for this for the residents of Port Moody, we should be considering. So I'm, I'm appreciative of the motion because that will give us an opportunity to make consideration to your request, not only um, the, the, the general request, but also um, talk a little bit more about um, the types of things that we need to consider if we wanted to be a lead plaintiff and what that might involve. So I'm, I appreciate the motion because we do, there are some things that we, that we should be considering in this. Um, going forward to determine how we want to be involved, if we want to be involved at all. But um, certainly I think that anything that we can do um, to mitigate the costs towards the city, we should be considering and looking at. So really appreciate your, your um, contribution here tonight. And we'll let you know when this, um, when this comes back to, the, to a future agenda. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Councillor Knowles, did you? Yeah, I just wanted to have just a Little last comment. Um, okay. I, I just wanted to note that we have actually several items on the agenda tonight that speak to uh, addressing climate change uh, yeah. in our community. So perhaps the delegation would like to hang out, and um, <laughs> I'm I'm hoping that um, all of them tonight will receive unanimous support. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, next item is minutes. Um, oh, actually, I'll call the question. All in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you.